In my 16 years gardening, I've had some successes and a lot of failures. One of the biggest lessons I've learned is when you find something that works, stick to it. And when you find something exceptional, well, that's pretty special. This is a list of some of those special seeds, my top 10 must grow varieties. Number one is Juliet tomato. This is a perfect plant in my opinion. Ian and I always say that we're tomato-based life forms because we eat so many tomatoes that we might as well be made of tomatoes and if I could grow only one tomato this would be it and in fact this year I'm planning on planting 50 of this specific variety. A Juliet tomato is a smaller fruit. It's like a mini Roma. They're they're bigger than a grape tomato, smaller than a Roma. The flavor on them is exceptional. They're drier like a Roma, so they're really good sliced. They're not gonna just melt into juice the way a cherry tomato does. But the flavor is also so good that you know, super satisfying as a snacking tomato the way a cherry tomato is. Also, because it is uh, so dry, it makes for really good dried or sun-dried style tomato, and it's nice and meaty, so it makes an amazing sauce. Because the fruit is smaller, it produces really early, and it's one of the most productive plants that I've, I've ever grown in regards to a tomato. The amount of fruit that you get off of a Juliet tomato plant is amazing, and it produces really early, and it goes really late in the season. It's, I highly advise everyone, if you grow nothing else, grow a Juliet tomato. They are so good. <laughs> Number two is Dima zucchini. This is a newer discovery for me. We grew it for the first time last year, and the flavor on this zucchini is so good. It's it's almost creamy. You you can almost eat it fried on its own, and it tastes like it's fried in butter. As good as the flavor is, as important selling feature for me is the fact that seed to fruit is 35 days. I didn't I didn't actually believe that I would get fruit off of it that quickly. It seemed too good to be true, but. I planted this and watched the calendar click and yeah, just over a month, almost as quick as a radish to, to get a, a harvest off of it. And it kept producing really well for up to two, three months. It, it had a really, uh, really good disease resistance that just kept it going, producing and producing, producing. I love a classic green zucchini, but I'm, I'm never gonna not have one of these beautiful gray zucchinis in my garden ever again. Number three is Salanova lettuce and specifically the green sweet crisp. We pretty much built our farm last year on how good this lettuce is. I I was never a big, big uh, salad person. I'd always prefer a tomato salad over a lettuce salad any day, but this lettuce was so good that I was eating it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was crisp and juicy like a romaine, but it was also sweet and tender like a butter lettuce. And add on to that the beautiful frilly leaves that made this really pretty mounding salad when you chopped it up. As good as you know the flavor was on the lettuce, it that's not where the benefits of it ended. It went through all the heat of our summers. We got a hundred, hundred degree heat in in the summer. It had no problem with it, and it also survived like into freezing temperatures. It many of my plants completely froze over our cold fall, defrosted, and still let me harvest them. The tolerance, both on the heat and the cold, was better than any any other lettuce I've ever grown. It also is a pretty fast producer. You know, it's it's about a month and a half, you know, six weeks from, from seed to your first harvest, kind of, you know, eight weeks to a big, beautiful head. 
and it kept for so long in the fridge. We were selling it at the farmer's markets and we had customers coming back telling us that they'd had it in the fridge for three weeks and it was still perfect. It's, it really is the perfect lettuce. The only problem with this lettuce is it, you can only buy it from Johnny's Seeds, but <laughs> it's, it's worth it. It's, it's a little bit pricier than lettuces that you'll find at, at other companies, but it's worth its weight in gold. I, if you only grow one lettuce, you should grow this lettuce. Number four is Dragon's Tongue Bush Beans. One of my favorite things to eat fresh from the garden, I never have a garden that doesn't have them, is bush beans. I love them. But I always have the complication of, if I'm not out there every day picking them, some get too big and then they don't taste very good, or you get out there and you pick some of them and they're immature and they just, they don't have a good flavor. So I've been struggling to find the perfect bush bean, but I feel like with Dragon's Tongue, I found it. it no matter how big the beans got, to, to a point, obviously, it was amazing flavor, nice, good, non-stringy non texture. They were really sweet. I, I love them. I love them raw. I love them cooked. They were a really great flavor. And on top of that, I've never seen a bush bean I thought was as beautiful as these beans. I, I grew it specifically because I liked the look of it, not really expecting much. I All I wanted out of it was to get a beautiful picture of how, how wonderful these beans looked. And they ended up being just so much more than that. I'm never gonna go back from growing these bush beans. The dragon's tongue is, is my new favorite and it's gonna be in my garden for years to come. Number five is white icicle radish. I love radishes. I, I love them in the summer when they're super hot. I, I love them in the winter when they're super mild and tender. Any, any radish, I love them all. But the white ice skull radish really stands out above the other ones. My old favorite was French breakfast and I still love it. But I gotta say, white ice skull, it's, it, it is so good. It's a super fast producing radish. It's about 25 days. So it's, you know, it's not a daikon. It, it's not gonna take months in the garden. It's a, it's a plant and harvest really, really quick, which is one of my favorite things about radishes. But the flavor on it is, is quite similar to a daikon. It doesn't get as spicy. It's really juicy. It has a sweetness to it. The greens on it are, are a little bit different, more similar to, to a daikon than your classic garden radish. And it's a long skinny radish. So you actually get a lot, a lot of root per, <laughs> per square foot for these specific radishes. Ian's not a huge radish fan, but he loves the white icicle too. And they, they look so unique. They're really fun to chop up and roasted. They're really good. It, 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 it's the perfect radish. Number six is winter boar kale. If you've been around, <laughs> around here for a while, you might know I'm not a huge fan of kale. It's, it's definitely not my favorite thing to eat because tomatoes are my favorite thing to eat, but I do like kale in the winter. There just isn't as many options in the winter and kale is always an, a good, reliable crop for me. I'm in zone five up here in Canada. There's not very many things that I can keep harvesting all winter, but specifically winter boar kale, it goes all winter. It's a nice frilly leafed kale. So it has a, it has a really good shape for doing those winter salads when I'm sad and I, I don't have anything else to eat fresh. It, it cooks well, it's good in stews, it's good in smoothies, it's good raw. It's, it's a nice versatile kale and the, the winter hardiness on it. It's, it's the most winter hardy kale I've, I've ever found. And if, if you've never experimented with winter growing, this specific kale is a really easy entry into it. Pop a few plants into your garden in the height of summer and you'll get a, you know, a year round harvest before you have to replant again. It's, it's an amazing plant. Number seven is Cylindra beets. I love beets. I, I love the flavor of them. Steamed beets is, it's a staple for us in the fall. But my number one favorite variety in beets is Cylindra. It is a long, skinny beet. 
grows almost similar to a carrot, you know, like a short stumpy carrot, but, but a carrot. Because of that, you get a lot of beet in the space. I also really like the shape of it for doing canned beets. If you like pickled beets, this is the perfect beet. It grows to this perfect size for doing slices that end up being just exceptional <laughs> for the size of a jar. I also really love the flavor. It's it's not an overly sweet beet. It still has some of the earthy flavors that I personally like in a beet. So I, I like that it has that balance, the beet flavor and the sugar flavors. It you know it, it's it's a it's a good beet for that and it has a really nice texture as well. I also find it fairly easy to grow. There have been some beets <laughs> that I have failed at growing, but I've never failed with Cylindra. It's, it's an awesome variety. Number eight is giant red mustard. As I said with lettuce, not a huge salad fan, but if I'm going to eat a green, I love the giant red mustard. It tastes like mustard. It, it has that like spicy kick to it but it's so beautiful it's it's green and red speckled and you can pick it when it's small as a baby leaf and it's it's a lot more mild or you can let it get big you know the leaves will get it the size of a hand and at that size they got a, a nice kick to them that's that's the way i like it it also is you know you can eat it fresh or you can have it cooked it's it's good as a cooked green as well all the mustard greens are great for cool season growing. They produce really early and they're quite cold tolerant. So it's a great thing to have in the garden for the spring and the fall. Beautiful and versatile. <laughs> Giant red mustard has been in my garden for years and it's also gonna be in my garden for years to come. Number nine is Joy Choi. And let me tell you, this is the most accurately named variety ever because this choy is a pure joy to grow. I tease Ian and call him the choy boy because he loves choy, he loves to eat it raw, we love to eat it cooked. Uh, choy is, is a staple in, in, our, in our kitchen. I've struggled in the past to get a head of choy to make a nice tight clump the way that you get them in the grocery store. We don't really have perfect conditions for growing choy here. Our springs go from cool to hot, you know, like just right away. And choy doesn't really like that transition. But the Joy Choy, it, it made these really, really nice heads. They were ready to be picked at three weeks as these little baby baby heads that were you know a good size perfect for picking and up to up to eight weeks they they still were this nice nice plant not compact they got quite big and even as all the other choys that we were growing were going to seed the joy choy held in the field it held in the field three weeks longer than any of our other choys. And I was growing mostly bolt, bolt tolerant choys. That's when they, they go to flower, the bolting. This this choy was it so easy to grow. It was also really beautiful. It had pure milky white stems contrasting against the green leaves. And the flavor was so delicious. Nice, juicy, crunchy, you know, baby to full grown. I, I loved it. It was an amazing choy. This year on the farm, I'm not growing any choys except for joy choy. And I highly recommend you get some joy in your life too. For me, the first nine of this list was really easy. These, these are all my favorites. These are things I grow every year, will grow every year. If I could only grow 10 things, these nine are it. But I struggled to come up with number 10. And the reason is there's so many that I love. It's, it's hard to narrow myself down to 10. I love eggplants. I wanted to put Traviata eggplant on this list because it's my number one eggplant. Uh, hot peppers, uh, giant giant red cayenne. I love that as a hot pepper. Just so productive for me to be able to make hot sauce in the fall. Other tomatoes that I love. I was really, really happy last year with the Scarlet Nance carrots. I, I didn't know what to tell you should be number 10. And then I realized that there's actually a flower that I grow in my garden. 
every year and I eat it <laughs> all year long. <laughs> there's, there's a flower that is actually one of my most commonly eaten vegetables and that is whirly bird nasturtium, which is my number 10. I see nasturtiums in people's window box gardens, tucked into corners of their landscaping. It really is a beautiful flower. But you might not know, it's also really, really delicious. Our salad mix, we put nasturtium flowers into it to make it pop and look beautiful. And the flavor of a nasturtium is almost similar to the, the mustards. It's, it's spicy and, and it's got this little bit of a kick. It almost, it almost tastes like, like raw broccoli or, or a radish. It's, it, it's a, a little bit, a little bit bitter a little bit of a spice, um, very fresh tasting. It's, it's really, really tasty. And not only are the flowers edible, but the leaves are edible too. And the leaves are these beautiful little lily pad type type petals. They're, they're really pretty. I also pick the immature seeds and pickle them and use them as a, as a poor man keeper substitute. So in my fridge right now, I, you know, I have multiple jars of pickled nasturtium seeds that I use anytime I do a pasta salad or I always add it onto a charcuterie plate. It's, it's one of the few pickles that I actually eat year round. I actually have a video where I talk about how to eat a nasturtium plant that I made a few years ago. So I'll, I'll tap that, you know, wherever they go. If, if you've never heard of eating nasturtium and you want to know more, but whirly bird nasturtium is my absolute favorite because the one thing about the nasturtiums is it's a little bit difficult to pick the flowers because the flowers will be low they, the plant becomes this kind of like trailing mound and the flowers are down below and you almost have to open up the plant to be able to see all the the flowers and the buds but the whirly bird the way it grows is the the flowers actually sit above the greens so whirly bird specifically is exponentially easier to pick the flower blossoms for eating uh, above other varieties of nasturtium that I've grown. So that that's what makes whirly bird nasturtium go to the top of the list. So if you're like me sitting up here in Canada zone zone five sad because uh, it's gonna be a long time until I get to plant anything you are probably doing the fun of dreaming about seeds and seed shopping. You maybe are still playing with your seed catalogs, making up your wish list of what it is you want to have in your garden this year. And hopefully these 10 seeds will give you, give you a few, a few ideas or a few temptations if you've already bought your seeds and these weren't on it for what you should have in your garden too. I'm impatiently waiting for March 1st. That is when my indoor seed starting begins. Tomatoes get started March 1st, and I am very excited for the upcoming season. This is our second year farming, and our farm is going to be a little bit bigger than last year, and we hope it's gonna be a lot more productive than last year. We're hoping that the mistakes that we made in the past, we can learn from them, and we can do even better in this coming year. So make sure to keep following along. It feels like it's very far off <laughs> at this point, but it'll be here in no time.